This is Dr. Wood with Citadel Civil Engineering. This is Civil 203 Dynamics. In this uh, lesson, we'll talk about learning objective 2.2, which looks at problem solving uh, in rectilinear kinematics using predefined sets of equations. So as engineers, we've been learning about our particle kinematics. And so hopefully you watched the video and maybe we've even met in class and we've talked about that rectilinear motion, so one dimensional, and where objects is mod modeled as particles. So in my little demo, we had Jordy on a cart and we modeled that whole thing as a point just at some location. So modeling that as a particle. We're gonna continue in that chapter 11, moving into uh, chapter 11.1 parts B uh, as well today. And, uh, but what we wanna do as engineers is rather than like physicists would, thinking about that kinematic wheel and always deriving fresh equations, it turns out that engineers encounter specific types of problems on a regular basis, and that we like to have some equations handy for when those types of problems come up. And so I'm not gonna derive those equations, the derivations are laid out more or less in your textbook, but instead I wanna throw them at the board, and then when we meet together for class, we're gonna work the same problem together, but using the three different methods. So that's, that's a little heads up there. And so it turns out that the, the way we can think about acceleration is sometimes acceleration is given to us as a function of time. So you can see here, this notation is not a times t, this is like function, right? So acceleration as a function of time. So whatever this is, we're going to expect to see numbers with units and t's showing up in that equation for acceleration as a function of time. This would be contrasted with acceleration as a function of position, s, or acceleration as a function of velocity. And so each one of those cases, we can go ahead and have some equations handy. I'm going to blow the screen up full size for us. Um, so that we can see this well. You can see it well, whoops. Okay, there we go. And from here, we should be able to lay these things out. So remember on our wheel of time, we said that if we had acceleration, we'd wanna calculate velocity by doing the integration of position. So we'd integrate from t naught to t uh, that acceleration dt. I'm sure I said that wrong. So if we wanted to find, go from acceleration to velocity, we do the integration of acceleration with respect to time. And what we're doing here is we're actually explicitly laying out all those initial conditions. So if we look at this, this is going to be my initial time. Often that initial time is zero, but it certainly doesn't have to be. Um, this is going to be our initial velocity. Okay, so initial time, initial velocity. That's what the little O means, is initial. This guy is our dependent variable. Which I will abbreviate to, uh, sorry, that's not a dependent variable, it's an independent variable. I'll abbreviate to IV. And that's gonna give us a function of velocities to where we could plug in any given t and we could find the velocity. So there's acceleration as our function of time and we would integrate. Once we found that velocity as a function of time, we could then calculate position as a function of time by integrating our velocity. And in this case, we're gonna have to add our initial position. Some important mathematical notation to keep in mind. We go from an integral sign to the, the, the differential unit, so integral d dt, and then this is outside that integration. Likewise here, it's outside the integration. And so what we would do is we would solve for the velocity as a function of time and then substitute it into this second equation. And so if we were thinking of our procedure, because we're gonna have to write procedures for all of our homework, the first thing we're always going to want to do is draw a picture. So we're going to want to start by sketching a kinematic property diagram. 
which I will abbreviate to KPD so you don't watch me write that forever in a day. So kinematic property diagram. This is just going to be a quick sketch that shows where things are, what their velocities are, what their accelerations when we know them. For rectilinear motion, this is basically just a number line with position and velocity on it and acceleration on it. But once we've done that, we would then just kind of plug and chug. So we would go from acceleration as a function of time to velocity as a function of time. And then we would substitute velocity as a function of time to solve for position as a function of time. And then finally, once we had all those equations, we can substitute and solve for any unknowns. But there's clearly a sequential process to that. So that's position as a function of time. All right. So when we think about, uh, sorry, acceleration as a function of time. When we think about acceleration as a function of position, in this case, we're going to have, we're going to want to be able to calculate our velocity as a function of position. And this equation is going to look like this. So again, I'm not doing the proof here. I'm just illustrating it for you. You probably want to add this to your FE reference handbook. Okay, so this is going to be two times the integration of position with as a, of acceleration as a function of position plus v naught squared square rooted. Okay, so again, this is my initial velocity here. I've got my initial position now as part of my integration limits, all to find the velocity as a function of position. From there, I can find time as a function of position because remember, this position up here. This is my, ind my independent variable. That's kind of my unknown, right? Or sorry, not my unknown. It's what, what is known. And so typically what we'll do is we'll just substitute that in for whatever cases we care for. Substitute it in. We can solve for the time then. And what that's going to look like. This one looks nasty though, right? So it's going to be 1 over the velocity as a function of position integral ds plus that initial time. So you can see here where these initial values are in fact the integration constants. And we'd have to first solve for that so that we could substitute it in there. So our procedure would be to draw our kinematic property diagram, then to calculate our acceleration as a function of position to go to velocity as a function of position, then go from velocity as a function of position to time as a function of position, and then we could solve for various positions. Okay. So that's acceleration as a function of position. Finally, we can look at acceleration as a function of velocity, where we're going to have time as a function of velocity. I'm going to get my notes here handy. And we would integrate from V naught to V, okay, where that velocity is our independent variable. one over the acceleration plus the initial time. And we could also solve for position. And it's going to look like this. Like so. Again, we got initial positions, initial time, limits. Now you'll notice in both of these cases that the uh, velocity term is given, right? And our acceleration is a function of velocity. So we don't have to work the equations uh, sequentially. Just keep in mind, these are our independent variables here. And so our procedure is going to look very much the same in which we'll start with our kinematic property diagram 
and then we will go from acceleration as a function of velocity to time as a function of velocity or acceleration as a function of velocity to position as a function of velocity and then solve for various velocities. And so those are our four different methods. You want to make sure that those are in your FE reference handbooks. So I can sketch in some lines just to make sure we keep things separated. Like so those are our three different methods. And so what we'll do is next time in class, we'll tackle a problem, the same problem, uh, looking at it as these different parameters. And so I look forward to seeing you in class. You'll want to make sure that you got this little screenshot saved and in your notes and copied into your FE reference handbook. Thanks, and I'll see you in class.